Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled Deputy Chef from the Code Chef February 2019 Long Challenge. The problem statement is here. If you want, you can pause the video and read it, but it's very long and uh, it tells a long story that's not really necessary to understand the problem. So instead, what I'm going to do is skip this and uh, go straight to the examples and just explain the problem with the examples. So here are the two examples that Code Chef provides us with. And uh, the first number is T, the number of test cases. Uh, the next number for each of the test cases is N, the number of soldiers. And then we have uh, some numbers A and some numbers D that represent attack and defense of each of our N soldiers. So we'll take a look at the first example where we have four sol soldiers. And if we zoom in, uh, these are the attack and the defense values. So the first line uh, represents the attack values and the second line represents the defense values for each of our four soldiers. So we have four soldiers, each of them have an attack and an, a defense. And basically the problem tells a story about how they're all standing in a circle uh, in the order that they're specified. So this guy is next to uh, this soldier and then also the soldier at the end here. So you can imagine these soldiers in a circle and at a certain point in time, they're all going to attack each other. And you can either attack the person on your left or the person on your right. And the question asks to return the defense value of the, uh, the maximum defense value of the soldier that's guaranteed to live. And the way you live is defined on uh, whether or not the defense is greater than the total value that attacks you. Um, so in the worst case, uh, both the person on your left and the person on your right is going to attack you. So basically this problem boils down to just looping through, you're attacking your defense once and checking is the defense of individual I greater than the combined attack of the uh, soldier I minus one and soldier I plus one and to just return uh, the value that is largest for the defense. And if there is no soldier that has a defense greater than the combined attacks of the person on the left and right, then you return negative one, which is the case for the second example here. Uh, so if we calculate the combined attacks for each of the people uh, or the soldiers on the left and right, we get the following. So you can see for our first soldier here, uh, if the person on the right attacks, they have an attack of one, and the person on the left is the person at the end of the array, also has an attack of one, the combined attack is two. We do the same thing for the second soldier. Uh, attack on the left is one, attack on the right is four, so combined attack is five, and we continue to do this and we get two, five. And then all we have to do is compare these values to the defenses, and every single one of the defenses is less than or equal to the attack, so these three people, uh, if they were to get attacked by uh, both individuals on the left and the right would die. Um, but the first individual has a defense of three and the maximum attack is two, so that's gonna be our answer. And note that you're probably thinking, well, if both people attack um, from the left and right, that means some people aren't gonna be getting attacked at all, like how do you determine this? The question states basically, for any configuration of people attacking, so um, you need to be able to survive in every single case, whether that's only the person on the left, only the person on the right, or both people attacking on the left and right. So. Uh, once you sort of figure that out, it's a really straightforward problem. Even though this was the third problem in the Division II contest, I would actually argue that this was probably the simplest. Uh, the most difficult part was just um, figuring out what the problem was asking for because it had such a long problem statement. So with all that being said, let's take a look at our code. So here is our C++ solution. It actually looks a little bit more complicated than it is, and that's um, really just because we have five lines dedicated to reading in our input. Um, but the actual solution, the algorithm part of this is only four or five lines itself. So uh, taking a look at what we have here, we're reading in T the number of test cases, looping through uh, our T test cases. For each test case, reading in N the number of soldiers. And then we're reading in our values uh, for our attack A and our defense D. And uh, we have a little trick here because we have to do comparisons of the soldiers that are at the I minus one and I plus one elements for the first and last soldiers that would mean that we have to do sort of a wraparound check. Uh, but in order to avoid that, we can just sort of extend the um, length of our vectors by two uh, for an extra person at the beginning and the end. 
And uh, you can see that's why we're reading into i plus 1, even though we're looping from 0 to n. And what that is is just sort of duplicating the person at the beginning at the end and the begin at the end at the beginning. So you can see we're storing to the first individual here a copy of the last person and to the last person a copy of the first person. And this just enables us to avoid having to worry about wrapping around. And we can just write a single for loop and we're good to go. So once we've done this, we come down to the algorithm portion and we're initializing the answer that we're going to output to negative 1 in case that we're not able to find a soldier that's able to defend uh, him or herself. And then we're looping through note from 1 to uh, n and then checking uh, is the combined attacks of the soldiers at i minus 1 and i plus 1 uh, less than the defense of the current soldier that we're looking at. And if so, we want to find the maximum value there. So we're setting answer to be the maximum of the current value and whatever the defense is of the individual or the soldier that we're currently at. And once we finish this for loop, we just output the answer. So uh, like I said before, pretty straightforward problem. I uh, just need to get through with the problem statement and figure out what the problem is asking. And the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which for this problem is going to be big O of t times n, where t is the number of test cases and n is the number of soldiers. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contest start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.